Hey guys, I just wanted to say thank you for the recent support on my Jake Gyllenhaal video, and I wanted to apologize for the inconsistent upload schedule. I've just been really swarmed with college and work, but expect more uploads soon because I don't plan on stopping. I got something special coming up in relation to a lot of the comments on the Jake Gyllenhaal video, so be on the lookout for that. For the most part, shark movies are pretty hit or miss. There's a handful of good ones and a lot of bad ones. They're usually seen as low-hanging fruit in cinema and aren't the most conscious of movies. A lot of them are just copy and paste, but I have to admit that shark movies are my biggest guilty pleasure, and I've been wanting to make a video about this for a while. I'll enjoy a shark movie even if I know it's terrible. I can't quite explain why, but it goes beyond the whole popcorn flick adage for me. Sharks are my favorite animal, and I can honestly enjoy pretty much any shark movie no matter how corny it is, and they're usually super corny. Surf's up. These films reached a peak with Jaws and have never really come back to that level. I think a reason for this is because we've lost sight of what makes these predators so scary to begin with, which is the suspense. But I honestly believe there are some genuinely high quality shark movies out there that either got a bad rap or were just completely overlooked. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at some of the greatest shark movies of all time and exploring why they work, while also addressing what doesn't work about this genre and why it started to die off completely. And yeah, I'll probably say the word shark so many times by the end of this video that it'll just start to sound weird. Shark. Let's start off with the best series of shark movies ever created, Sharknado. Huh, that's uh, that's weird. The last segment seemed to just cut off, but anyway, I guess I'll just move on to The Shallows. This movie came out in 2016, and it stars Blake Lively, who gives an incredible performance. This movie's definitely more serious in tone, and makes the character of the shark a scary thing again, because that's what the shark really is in this movie, a character, rather than just a plot device. The shark in question is very aggressive and very stubborn. Pretty much the whole movie centers around Blake Lively out in the middle of the ocean, stranded on a small rock, as the shark circles her over over and over, waiting for the right moment to attack. This plot is pretty straightforward, but they make it work. With a plot as simple as this, the movie is certainly carried by Blake Lively's performance, seeing as she's really the only person you see the whole time. But that makes her feel real, as opposed to some fodder character for the shark to chew on. Her fear is so genuine, and you can feel the anxiety through the screen. There are so many tense, close call moments in this movie where you truly question whether or not she's going to make it. And they do a good job of effectively creating a stressful environment for the protagonist, causing her to think of many clever ways to get to safety. The whole movie is a nail-biting rush, and you're on the edge of your seat cheering her on the whole time. This is one of my favorite shark movies because they took it in a more serious direction and really committed. I also think it's one of Blake Lively's best performances. You can tell they actually put a lot of effort into this movie and that she's really giving it her all. It's just refreshing to see a studio take this kind of approach instead of a half-assed popcorn flick, as I've said before. But honestly, this approach isn't the only winning formula. You can make a shark movie more lighthearted and fun, but once again, you fully gotta commit to the absurd and go all out. A good example of this is The Meg from 2018 with Jason Statham. Yeah, not a lot of people like this movie, but let me just make my case. To me, it's obvious that this is one of those movies that you just don't need to think about too hard. You just sit back and enjoy the show. And while it's super corny, it's just the right amount of corny. Jason plays the classic Jason role of a tough guy badass, but instead of taking on the rock, he takes on a giant megalodon, which is just as fun to watch. I like this because sharks have been done so many times before to the point that the audience is just numb to it. And this movie does something different by taking the classic shark movie formula and upping it times 10. It's kind of like those cheesy movies with terrible effects you would see at a family video back in 2010, but with the budget of a huge blockbuster. I think that's just a recipe for a good time. Once again, I think why I like this movie so much is in large part due to Jason Statham's over-the-top performance. You can tell he's really having fun with it, and that makes you want to have fun with it too. And yeah, these movies obviously wouldn't be as good without the strong lead roles, but you can say that about almost any movie. In this case, Statham delivers with a fun adventure and you won't regret watching. So far, I'm noticing that to make a good shark movie, you have to take the basic blueprint and add a new element, whether that be making the shark ginormous or making him Australian. Hello. You need that added element to spice things up, and that's exactly what 47 Meters Down did. The sequel, we're not going to talk about, but this movie, much like The Shallows, adds a lot of high intensity stress to the mix. Alongside the shark, this movie focuses on two sisters stranded at the bottom of an ocean in a cage, while also running low on oxygen. It's very similar to The Shallows in regards to the situation the characters are in, because they have to use their wit to come up with unique game plans that will keep them alive, all the while a great white shark is lurking in the distance. The fact that these movies take
take place in one small area throughout the entire runtime makes them feel claustrophobic in a good way. The added pressure of time always adds to the tension as well. Now, this movie doesn't really have a lot of star power like the other two, and all the above water acting isn't very good. But while they're down at the bottom of the ocean, I think the two leads did a great job. After a while, you really start to feel how extreme the situation is, as their oxygen slowly runs out and the shark relentlessly circles and attacks their cage. Without spoiling too much, I will say the movie has a good twist at the end too. And really, this is all it takes. Successfully being able to make your audience feel for the characters and experience the anxiety they're being put through makes a great shark movie, and just a good movie in general. Overall, in addition to not really seeing much of this genre in recent years, I think these movies are in a weird place. They aren't at a point where they're meant to be taken that seriously, but they're not in the realm of so bad they're good either. It's kind of like how people find MCU movies to be hacky and generic cash grabs as opposed to real films. But I honestly think there's a lot more to explore in the genre and that it has the potential to be so much more than it is right now. I think movies like The Meg are a good example of this because they lean more into the comedic tone rather than horror. But that's just one way to put a spin on things and stand out in an interesting way. The problem is that the majority of shark movies are low effort and stale, and it's resulted in the whole genre becoming obsolete. The only thing I can see happening with these movies is pointless remakes of classics like Jaws and Deep Blue Sea. But personally, I would love to see someone like Jordan Peele tackle a shark movie because it would be nothing like anything we've seen before. If you guys have any other shark movie recommendations for me, put them in the comments below. And if you liked the video, make sure to subscribe to see more content like this. Peace.